Her triumphs, I took a group of women that didn't believe in themselves and I just believed in them. Her trials, I never wanted to go to practice. I was losing a ton of weight. Her story, I just put my faith in God and just trusted the system. Her why, I want people to see what I did and say, oh, that's so awesome. I'm gonna be better than that. That would be how I hope that this journey ends. This is Her Why, where we tell the stories from BYU women's sports. Here is your host, Lauren McLean. Today's guest is professional runner and former Cougar Courtney Wayman, who was a four-time national champion in college and is now making waves on the pro circuit as a member of Diljeet Taylor's professional running group, Taylor Made Elite. Courtney, thank you so much for being here with me. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to chat with you. It's seriously an honor. You've just done incredible things in your career, uh, collegiately and professionally. Is it a little bit weird when you think about running that, that you d- used to do it for fun, you used to it in college, and now you're doing it as a professional? Is that weird to think about? Yeah, I think it's, it is it is a little bit weird to think about just because I didn't know if that would ever be a possibility or if it was even going to be my dream to do that professionally, you know, to run professionally. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. it's it's really fun to be able to have something that I love and I'm so passionate about and do that as my job and then also do it with all the people that I love. So it's it's really cool. You have the best of both worlds. What's it been like running at the professional level compared to when you were running at BYU? Um, it's, it's very different. I mean, it's the same in the same aspect that I have incredible training partners that I've had since I was 18. And I have the same coach, you know, coach T that I've had since I was 18. So those things are all the same, but it's, it's a different level and there's different expectations. There's different, um, types of races, there's different seasons. And so there's, it's, it's a lot of different and it's a lot of change, but it's a lot of fun. It's a new challenge. It's a new task. It's something that, you know, it helps elevate all of us. Even though it is a professional level, were you surprised at all by the level of competition moving up to the pro level compared to collegiately? Yeah, I I think moving up, I think I, I feel ready. I mean, I'm still getting a little bit thrown into the the fire right now even in this season and but I think it's fun I think it's something I've been able to enjoy and um it's it's fun I feel like coach T had really prepared me and you know having Witt and Anna who got to do it first and got to do all these things so I think Mm -hmm. they helped you know they've helped pave that path for me too so and you're talking about Whitney Orton and Anna Camp and a camp. Okay. So you you obviously, when you were playing in college, you lived in Provo. Where do you live now and where do you train? Yeah. So I still um, train in Provo. I currently live in Springville with my husband, Tanner. We um, we just bought our first home. So we're living oh. out there. Um, Whitney Orton lives by us. So we still train here at BYU for a lot of it. And yeah, it's kind of, it's it's similar. It's different, but it's similar to what we were doing in college. You're sponsored by On Running. How does that work? Are you, they provide all the gear for you. How does a sponsorship like that work? Yeah, so it's it's very similar to um, if you have a job. Um, it's that's the people you know that pay your. You sign a contract with them, so that's the people that like pay your salary and they they give you all the gear and things like that. So um, that's kind of how it works. Is you you know you sign with a company and then you get to rep them and represent them as your as part of your brand and represent their brand and yeah that that's kind of how it works okay so that that and that's really how you make your money in the professional circuit right by these with these sponsorships yeah yep there's that there's there's a bunch of different ways there's you know there's prize money or things like that so but yes that is typically how in the pro circuit that was how you would make your money you're one of the first members of BOU Cross Country and track coach Dale G. Taylor's new professional running group, Taylor Made Elite. And you mentioned some of your other former teammates as well. What's it been like to continue training with her even after college? It's been honestly the dream. Like, I feel like I have such a good relationship with Coach Taylor. And like I mentioned with Whitney and Anna, you know, these all three of those women have seen me since I was you know, 17, 18 years old. And Whitney and Anna and I all competed against each other a little bit in high school. And so um, it's been really fun. And Coach T, the nice thing is, you know, she she understands my strengths. She understands my weaknesses. And, 
you know, she's patient and she has seen where I have been and seen where I, what I have done. And so it's really fun to have had someone that's been on this journey with me for so long be able to continue. And I, I'm like, I feel so lucky and so grateful that I get to have Coach Taylor continue to be my coach and my mentor and someone I can look up to um, during another big life change and during a new <laughs> a new journey. And, you know, being accompanied by your by your best friends who also get to do this with you, it's it quite honestly is living the dream. Oh, I love that so much. And you deserve it. You worked so hard to get here. How did uh, the idea come up for Coach Taylor to do this running group? Yeah, I think it was, I honestly, I don't know if it was ever really part of, it, it wasn't really ever part of um, the plan. Um, you know, typically in the running world, you find a group and you move somewhere else in the country and, you know, with whatever brand. And um we were all really lucky enough to have brands that were totally fine with us staying here in Utah. And it's been such a blessing. Um, you know, you're, you're close to family or close to what you know, and there's a different level of support staying where we are. And, um, it kind of, it kind of just unfolded that way. Like I, it wasn't necessarily in the works or in the plan. Um, it just unfolded that way. And I think it, it was, the best thing that could have happened for all of us you know it's just the best scenario and so it was kind of crazy how it happened but it it just it just happened to be honest yeah well you speak so highly of her and how she's impacted your running what well how specifically has she impacted your life and your career up to this point coach taylor she has been probably if not the most in like I think she's been the most influential person in my life you know if not the one of the most influential people in my life she has helped me in more than just running while running is the thing that gets put on display and triumphs and successes and the low points and things like that they're all on display with running um and while I'm grateful for all of those um, I'm even more so grateful. Coach Taylor has really, really helped me as a person and as an individual. She um, is really there for, you know, me now and Whitney Nana's pros, but all of her BYU women that are still under her in the collegiate world, um, she invests in who we are as people. And it's something that she does so well and does so uniquely. Um, she does it with a genuine, genuine, like the purest form of love. And she, she's really just helped me as a person and helped me grow into the person I am trying to become and want to become. And um, she does it with a lot of love and a lot of grace and a lot of patience. And it's something that is so unique to her. And I feel like that is why you know, we all want to stay around because who doesn't want to be around someone who just <laughs> offers so much love and so much support mm. and patience and grace. And so she's she's a very, very important person in my life and like who I would love to emulate or become like. Sounds like everyone needs a Dilji Taylor in their life of some sort. I, I want to know because you, you just had an interesting uh, life when it comes to running and I you know you've started playing soccer originally, but I want to know when did you first dream of running professionally? Do you remember that moment? Yeah. So it actually wasn't until way late in my running career. It was actually in my fourth year um, at BYU. So, you know, traditionally had we not had COVID that's typically when people end their collegiate careers. And um, yeah, it was in my fourth year and COVID had just happened and I remember being really frustrated with running and I felt like I was never ever going to get the opportunity to be healthy and to race. Um, the The past two seasons before COVID had happened in outdoor, um, I had gotten injured and it, it completely cut my season. And so I felt like, you know, when COVID happened, I would never get the opportunity. And so I felt like, man, I, I'll never get to see whatever my real potential was. And I was kind of having a, I was having a pity party for myself. And I was talking to my husband about it. And my husband was the one that actually decided we needed to go on the pro journey. He, 
he loves golf. So my husband's an avid golfer. Um, when it's warm weather, he is out like four times a week golfing. He loves it. And um, we were driving in the car and he just said, Court, he was like, if I had the opportunity to be the next Tiger Woods, he was like, I would do anything in my power to achieve it. And he was like, you have that opportunity in running and you need to go for it. And so wow. we kind of just made that decision right then and there in the car that mm. we were going to try to do this. And, you know, if we if I never got the opportunity to run professionally, then we can say I, I went for it. So that was kind of the moment that the dream sparked. And I remember I texted Coach Taylor and I was like, hey, I know <laughs> I said I would never run professionally, but I think I think I actually do want to. So <laughs> we're doing this. I know. She I, was lo- like, okay. I, I love I love that. I love what your husband said too. That that gave me chills. What a what a great guy and a great motivator. We're going to get to him a little bit later, but let's talk about that incredible BYU career that you had. You broke records. You were an All-American, indoor distant medley national champion, 3,000 meter, 5,000 meter national champion, outdoor Steeple Jays national champion, and now you're a professional runner for on running. Did you ever imagine you would be in this position that you're in today? Gosh, I mean, I would love to say yes. My dream was always to be a professional (laughs) athlete. Maybe it wasn't necessarily in running, but I always dreamed I wanted to do something big with athletics. So I, but no, I never would have imagined myself here and what I'm doing now. I'm, you know, as I've been in the pro world for, I don't know, seven, eight months now, I've been, I've just been really grateful to soak it all in. You know, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of hard and just grateful for both. So it's it's fun to see the position that I'm in now and think back to when I was young and think about all the dreams that I had and just remind myself that like I get to do this and not everyone gets to do this. So let's rewind six years ago. You, you had a really good freshman season in 2017. You had a tough regional race and you didn't make it to nationals. What was it like for you to not compete that year? Um, it was really tough. I mean, I, I was fine in the sense that I'd never gotten the opportunity, so it wasn't right, anything, right. you know, I didn't have a taste of what that could be like. And so I think in that, on that front, I was okay in that sense. Um, however, it was pretty tough. Um, you know, you just wish and you hope that it, that was you. And I, I just remember just watching and I was like, I would do anything, anything to get to that on that mm-hmm. track and do those. And like I, I was watching people come, you know, make their dreams come true that were also my dreams. And and yeah, I just I was like, I'm going to do that one day. I just I put yeah. it in my mind where I'm like, I'm I'm going to do that one day. I don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know if I can, yeah. but I'm going to. <laughs> so you used it as motivation. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a little tiny pity party. Like I, I definitely cried in that <laughs> stance. I, I definitely was very sad. My dad took a picture of it and I had these puffy eyes from just giving a little bit of tears, but it was, it was definitely a big motivator of, you know, it's not about what's happening right now. It's keeping the goal and the dream, the focus. Well, you had a, a different pretty big life event after your freshman year, you got married <laughs> to Tanner Smith. How did you two first meet? So we actually grew up together. He's from my same hometown. We went okay. to the same junior high and high school. And um, yeah, I've, I've known him since I was like, I don't know, 12 years old. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we, we've known each other for a while. Um, we knew of each other, I guess I should say that. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah. But then after my first semester of college, we both went back home for the holidays and we had a big long break from BYU and he was at BYU Idaho and I was at obviously down here and he um yeah he just asked me out on a date and I yeah we went on a date we kept hanging out and kept talking and I I just was like man like I gotta lock him up because he's just too great <laughs> so that was kind of our little love story as I was like oh man I'm 18 and I, no part of me wants to get married. <laughs> no part of me, but I was like, it's going to happen for sure. So, oh, I love that. And I'm sure he was thinking the exact same thing. So you guys decided to do it. You get married. Was there ever a thought in your mind of how marriage would impact your running career? Did that ever cross your mind? Um, it No, it never crossed my mind, but it definitely crossed Coach Taylor's mind. We have some mm. really funny stories where... 
Um, she pulled Tanner into, I can't remember if it was into her office or she saw him or something like that. But she was like, if you are the reason that Courtney quits, she was like, we are not going to be on good terms or something like that. Something like she let Tanner know. She was like, you, you get to be her supporter and you don't, don't let her not chase her dreams. And so Tanner was like, yes, ma'am, I will do whatever you wow. say. So yeah, Coach Taylor definitely knew. And, but, you know, I think she That's, had a better vision of what my life could be or, you know, where I could go with running than maybe either of us thought at that time, you know, but that is her, yes. that's her specialty, you know. I'm so curious. Steeplechase is such a unique event. Why did you choose to run Steeplechase in the first place? Yeah, so my dad actually, he ran the Steeplechase when he was in college and um, he had a coach. Um, his name was Chick Hislop and my dad and my mom and Chick from the time I was, I don't know, maybe eight years old, they just knew that I was going to run the steeple. And and so I've mm. been told my whole life by anyone that knew my parents in the running world that I was supposed to run the steeple. So it was kind of like, like I, I remember when Coach Taylor got the job at BYU, our first conversation is I told her, I said, well, I'm a steepler. <laughs> she said, how do you know that? I'm like, I don't know. I was just told that. So, <laughs> but that's what I am. And she was like, okay. So that's how I got into it was I've just been told my whole life that that's who I was and who I was meant to be. And I, I just didn't question it, to be honest. We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to have more from professional runner and former BYU Cougar, Courtney Wayman. We're here with professional runner and former All-American and national champion, Courtney Wayman. So you missed the Olympic team by one spot in 2021. How hard was it to have been so close to uh, being able to be an Olympian? Um, you know, I've really thought about that question. And obviously, I would have loved to make an Olympic team. That was the goal that day. That was the dream. That, that still is the dream. But um, honestly, I didn't. I mean, there were moments where, you know, you feel the sting of like, when you're fourth, you still have to do all the same things that everyone else does as if you made the Olympic team. Um, but you don't get any of that. So you yeah. get to do all the same processing. You have to go through all the same paperwork. You have to get your flights. And, and, you know, when it was deep into COVID, we had to do all the COVID protocols. And I had to learn all of those things. And I had to take these 45-minute things on culture and things like that. So in those wow. moments, there there was that sting where I was like, man, I never want to be fourth again. This sucks. I'm either getting third or fifth and I'm out. Of, I won't do fourth again. But so there's that aspect. But other than that, there really wasn't any negative emotion. I I got on the line as a, golly, how old was I? 22. I got on as, on that line as a 22-year-old, my first year of running the steeple, my first full year of running the steeple. And I believed I could be an Olympian that day against some mm -hmm. very, very talented women. I mean, one of those women went on and got silver at the Olympics yeah. that year. And so um, for me, it was just I was so incredibly grateful to have gotten that opportunity because, you know, like we talked about six years, almost seven years ago, I dreamed about that moment. And so it was just more being grateful for the opportunity. And I put everything on the line that I had to try to be an Olympian and it, and it wasn't on that day and that's okay. Yeah. It was, it was, I got on that line and I believed that I could do that. And so I think that's what I carry from that experience is like, I got a really cool opportunity and I believed and that's that I think those are very powerful things. Absolutely. And it sounds like you want to try again one day. What would it mean to you to be an Olympian? Yeah, I think that would be <clears throat> one of the highest and one of the coolest things that I could do. I mean, that's to be an Olympian is a very um, it's a very prestigious title and it's the goal of any athlete, you know, especially in this running world. And so if I if I ever got that opportunity to line up and believe that I could make a team again, that that would be very special. And it's something that, again, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to do. So if I have that opportunity again, I, I think I, I think I, and I know I'll feel a lot of gratitude and feel very, very just grateful. 
Your dad missed the Olympic trials in 1984 because of a broken foot. He was an All-American steeplechaser. Your mom was also an incredible one runner at Weaver State. What, what is your mom and dad, how have they influenced you throughout your running career? Um, I feel like they've influenced me um, a little bit more when I was in college. But before then, they never pushed. Um, mm. They did but they didn't. They could have pushed a lot more. Um, but they really, something that I'm really grateful for is they've allowed it instead of, you know, they could quite easily live through me and, right. you know, chase the dreams that they didn't get to through mm -hmm. me. But they've really allowed me to have my own story. And I'm really grateful for that. They, they understand, you know, so it's nice when if I had a workout that went really good or if I had a workout that went really bad or a race or, you know, whatever, whatever the instance, I can call them and they understand. They know the physical feeling of that. They know the mental toll that it takes. They they understand because they did it themselves. And anyone that's run in college, you know, whatever level you're at, whether you're, you know, you're winning titles or you're trying to make the travel roster like you get what it takes and um so it's it's been really nice to have them to lean on in those moments and something I'm really grateful for is they've realized that while it is my own story you know I have my own coach my own teammates and so they've really really just allowed it to be my own story and allow me to have my own experience because they've already had theirs so it's they've just been able to use it as a way to bond with me and to share something that we both love, like we all have a love and a passion for, but they've allowed it to be my story, which I'm really grateful mm. for. And a big part of your story is you were a soccer player all growing up and you even played with some girls growing up who ended up playing for BYU. Who, who did you play with growing up that played for BYU? Yeah, so I played with for years and years with Michaela Coolahan. Um, we were on the same team for wow. years and years and years since we were elementary age. Um, so we played together and then in my last year of, um, my last year of playing soccer, I was with like Cameron Tucker and, um, <laughs> a couple of those people. So I've, wow. I've, yeah. So I got to, I was very fortunate enough to play with it, those guys. That's amazing. So did you ever, when you were growing up and playing with those girls, was it your dream to play college soccer? Yeah, it was. That, um, that's a big portion of why I, I chose to run in college. I, um, yeah, I, I was, I really, really wanted to play college soccer. That had been my dream since I was probably five or six years old. And, um, I was lucky enough to, you know, get looked at by a lot of colleges and do some, some tiny visits or, you know, what they call ID camps or things like that. So, you know, and I, I talked to um, a couple college coaches, but um, the dream in the direction that I would have wanted wasn't going to come true. And so I looked into other, you know, colleges and and I just didn't feel right about it. Something just didn't feel like mm. this was meant for me. And so I just really took a big leap of faith and I got out of soccer and that was that wow. was one of the toughest, you know, as like a 15 year old when for the last 10 right. years, that's all you've trained for. And you've been going to camps and you've been talking to college coaches and you've been this, that, whatever. But um, yeah, it, it was tough when I was younger, but I'm really grateful for it because it allowed me to see my opportunity in running. Wow. And how incredible for you to be able to follow that, like you said, as a 15-year-old. That is extremely difficult. But obviously, it all worked out for you. But that that not without some hardships and some drama. You had an illness in high school that caused oxygen deficiency that made it really difficult to race. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and how that affected you? Yeah, so I just got some unknown autoimmune type um, thing that's happened twice in my life. It happened once when I think I was, I don't know, maybe 10 years old. And then again, my senior year of high school. And um, it's so funny because I'm, I'm so far removed while well, that was a really hard time. And I, I remember feeling so sick. And I was even talking to my dad about it this week where I just remember 
I would fall asleep in all of my classes and I couldn't stay awake and I didn't know why and I would come home and there was just a lot of things wrong. You know, I wasn't getting a lot of oxygen. I I didn't have (laughs) oxygen in my body and so, you know, a lot of times I would get like numbness in my hands and my feet and I just would be exhausted all the time and and that was tough. Um, But I think just being in high school and I don't know, there's something about high school resilience where... It didn't affect me as much as I as I thought it would. While it did physically, like emotionally and mentally, I feel like it was just like, oh, yeah, 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 whatever. I'll get over it. It'll be fine. <laughs> Amazing. I love that. The high school resilience. You you also had a stress, stress fracture at BYU, a few other injuries. With everything like this combined against you, were you ever close to calling it quits? Or was it just like, oh, this is just another obstacle and let's keep going? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the first time I got injured at BYU, um, injuries are tough where there's not an exact timeline. You could say, oh, you got a fracture and that's eight to 12 weeks. Well, we got through the eight weeks, then we got through the 10, then we got through the 12 and there's just no, there wasn't a timeline because it still hurt. And um, yeah, that my first time being injured, it was, it was like five, six months of being injured. And that, that was really tough. And I, again, had a little pity party for myself as one does. And I called coach Taylor one night at like midnight and I just told her, I said, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. This is a lot of stress. This is a lot of, um, for something that I love so much. I I can't handle the stress and the sadness and the heartbreak of it. And coach T said, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I get that. And I respect that. However, she was like, let's get healthy let's get running again. And when you're doing those two things, if we need to revisit this conversation, let's revisit. And so I Mm. said, okay, I can do that. And then that following season, that was when I had my first um, All-American award. And so Coach Steve really helped me through that. But for sure, I think, I think when you, I don't know, I don't know many good runners that haven't had a moment of like, I don't know if I should, if I can keep doing this This is really hard. I think it's just all part of the process where it it helps you reevaluate how much you love and how big your goals and dreams are. That's incredible, Uh, man. Seriously, Dilji Taylor, her words (laughs) of advice are just amazing. And you are just an incredible person, an incredible athlete. My final question for you is when you finally end your running career, what do you hope to be able to say you accomplished during your career? The thing that I hope that I can accomplish um, when I end my career is I hope to inspire someone. There's been a lot of people and Coach Taylor specifically that have inspired me. And while I have goals that are tied with times and accolades and placements at certain races, I would rather be known for inspiring or being kind or things like that that's that's most important to me so hopefully and you know I think my last year at BYU my my biggest goal was I wanted to leave a legacy where someone could look up at you know our top 10 board and say like oh that's so fast that Courtney did that but I'm gonna be better than that and that's what I hope I want people to (laughs) see what I did and say oh that's so awesome I'm gonna be better than that 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 would be how I hope that this journey ends. I'm talking to All-American national champion and professional runner, Courtney Wayman. Courtney, you are just incredible. Thank you so much for coming on with me and taking the time and good luck in the rest of your professional career. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. It's been it's been a pleasure. You can download and listen to all episodes of Her Why on the BYU Radio app or wherever you find podcasts. Her Why is a production of BYU Radio.